Billionaires who are now broke From luxurious mansions and fancy cars to private jets and yachts, these men and women had it all. But a series of poor decisions, bad luck and other factors made them lose it all in the blink of an eye. 1. Patricia Klug Patricia Klug once lived the pinnacle of high society life before she lost it all during the housing market crisis that took place in 2008. She met her second husband, John W. Klug, on a trip to New York City. Once having a net worth of $5 billion and ranked as Forbes' richest man in the US, John Klug tied the knot with Patricia in 1981. The couple divorced nine years later and the former heiress and model received a generous settlement of $1 million a year as well as the once-shared Albemarle Estate, situated in the Virginian countryside a stone throw away from Thomas Jefferson's Monticello property. The estate would be the reason for the rise and eventual fall of Patricia Klug's affluence. Klug opened the Klug Estate Winery and Vineyard, sitting on 960 acres of land near Albemarle together with her third husband, William Moses, with the intention of turning her property into a lucrative business. She enjoyed a brief bout of success as the estate's wines graced the tables of socialites of prominent people across the country. She even had the pleasure of having her wine served at Chelsea Clinton's wedding. Unfortunately, she lost it all due to a series of poor investments and placing a lot of her money in the estate right before the housing market crisis. The winery was bought by Donald Trump in 2011 for a fraction of what it was worth after it was seized by the Bank of America. Klug held an auction of all her fine jewelry and other luxuries to try and save herself from bankruptcy. However, it didn't work out and she had to file for Chapter 7 bankruptcy in June 2011. 2. VJ Malia The former billionaire was a notable liquor magnate, known famously for his extravagant partying and lavish lifestyle. He also owned the now defunct Indian airline company Kingfisher Airlines. In 2012, it came to light that Malia had accumulated numerous debts to banks in his attempt to keep his airline business from sinking. When he defaulted on payments, the Indian banks that he had borrowed money from came knocking. He immediately sought asylum in the UK using a diplomatic passport that he acquired through becoming a member of the Upper House of Parliament in India. According to Business Standard, the businessman was accused of bank fraud and money laundering, his charges summing up to roughly 90 billion rupees, an estimated $1.3 billion. His wealth was greatly reduced after a bankruptcy petition was used to recover 1.145 billion US dollars in owed debts. The remaining funds are yet to be repaid, however. 3. Sean Quinn Sean Quinn acquired a great deal of wealth through his investments in various industries, including plastic, glass and hotels. On top of this, he also had a 25% stake in Angle Irish Bank, which had to be bailed out by taxpayers during the financial crisis in 2008. The government took over the bank and this set in motion a series of legal troubles between the Quinn family and the bank. Once thought to be the richest man in Ireland, Quinn lost a huge chunk of his $2.8 billion fortune. At one point, the Irish Bank Resolution Corp, which took over Angle Irish Bank, said Quinn owed them more than 2 billion euros. Soon after, he was charged with contempt of court for trying to hide his property assets from the bank, intending to avoid paying back his debts. In November 2011, Financial Times reported that Quinn claimed his assets were less than £500,000 and said he had applied for bankruptcy. Kevin Lunny, a close friend of Quinn and a director of Quinn Industrial Holdings, was abducted and beaten in 2019, which shows the recurring animosity towards Quinn and his company. 4. Jocelyn Wildenstein Today, Jocelyn Wildenstein is worth much less than the billions she once had according to money. The socialite and former wife of the late billionaire art dealer Alec Wildenstein filed for Federal Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection in May 2018. The New York Post reported that in filing, she claimed that she didn't earn anything and survived on $900 social security payments and help from her friends and family. She stated that most of her financial struggles arose from a faulty divorce settlement. Wildenstein also told the New York Post that she was promised much more than $2.5 billion, despite spending most of it. She was given two paintings during the settlement one by Diego Velazquez that turned out to be fake, and another by Paul Cezanne that was sold for only a fraction of what it was initially appraised at. The former billionaire told the New York Post in May 2018 that she's in need of a top lawyer to get her everything she believes she's supposed to have. 5. Bernard Madoff Bernie Madoff is known by many as the leader of the largest Ponzi scheme in US history. A master of the financial industry, Madoff flew undetected for decades before being caught in December 2018. Before the scandal, he and his wife had a personal net worth, estimated between $823 and $826 million. He's currently broke and serving a life sentence. 
he received a maximum sentence of 150 years in federal prison. He renounced most of his assets in a deal with the prosecutors before landing in prison. In exchange for turning over most of his fortune, an estimated $80 million worth of mansions, cars, jewelry, and art, his wife Ruth Madoff received $2.5 million. He is serving his sentence in Butner, California and has pushed for his release due to his terminal kidney disease and the rise of the coronavirus. Prosecutors, however, declined his plea for an early release. 6. Elizabeth Holmes Elizabeth Holmes was once said to be a rising star in Silicon Valley. Theranos, her blood testing company, began receiving attention in the early 2000s as an exciting new investment opportunity. The company promised to revolutionize the way patients are tested and treated for a number of diseases and illnesses. The company had raised approximately $6 million by the end of 2004 from private investors, some of whom had strong ties to Holmes. However, as the buzz around Theranos grew, so did the speculation about the new company's regulations and practices. Lt. Col. David Shoemaker raised his concerns with the Food and Drug Administration in 2012, when Holmes tried to get him to sign off on a test run in the military. The Centers for Medicine and Medicaid Services then did an inspection of the company and were told that the device was still under development. Tension was rising at Theranos, and despite the FDA approval, the media was still investigating its validity. Theranos had lost its two major partnerships with Safety and Walgreens by November 2015, and in 2016 CMS came to the conclusion that Theranos testing might risk the safety of patients. After several lawsuits, layoffs, and a federal allegation that Holmes had conducted massive fraud, Theranos finally closed its doors in 2018, avoiding bankruptcy by a whisker. Holmes then handed over control of the company and paid $500,000 to settle charges by the SEC. Holmes and her former partner, Ramesh Balieni, have been charged with wire fraud by the DOJ. The trial began in August 2020, with Holmes being charged separately from Balueni. 7. Bjorgulfer Gunmanson The Icelandic tycoon amassed his wealth from the brewing industry and was also the owner of the UK football team West Ham. However, in 2009, the man who was considered the second richest man in Iceland filed for bankruptcy. His bankruptcy protection filing covering a massive $759 million debt. This was the largest bankruptcy filing in Iceland history at the time. His fall from grace was mainly credited to the plummeting Icelandic economy during the recession. Gudmundsson and his son Thor both had major shares in the Icelandic bank, Landsbanki, which flopped in 2008. In December of the same year, Forbes revised Gudmundsson's net worth initially $1.2 billion to $0 when the billionaire declared bankruptcy. His son dropped down from the Forbes list as well and eventually dropped off completely. However, Thor Gunmanson has since regained most of his fortune in what Forbes deemed a crazy comeback. It isn't certain whether his father has had similar luck recently. 8. Ike Batista Ike Batista once had the dream of becoming the world's wealthiest man. His ambitions, however, came crashing down when his once booming oil company OGX went bankrupt in 2013. According to BBC, the self made billionaire was famously known for his high flying lifestyle and became a role model to the younger Brazilian generations. Batista was worth close to $30 billion placing him in Forbes' list as the seventh richest man in the world. But when Batista's oil company failed to meet the demands and the Brazilian economy declined, he had no choice but to file for bankruptcy in 2013. Batista was charged with money laundering and corruption in January 2017, when the authorities conducted investigations on Brazil's top companies to find out why they had declined so quickly. In July 2018, he was sentenced to 30 years in prison for bribing former Rio de Janeiro Governor Sergio Cabral. On March 24, 2020, it was declared that Batista has struck a deal with Brazilian authorities and will serve four years in prison, pay back $160 million, and cooperate with the prosecutors. According to Be in America, the court still needs to validate the deal, and the money received from the fine will be used to fight against the coronavirus. 9. Robert Allen Stanford The orchestrator of the second largest investor fraud case in U.S. history, Allen Stanford is renowned for his shady business dealings and for conning more than 18,000 customers out of their savings. Unlike Madoff's victims, those of Stanford have yet to be compensated for the crimes committed against them. Stanford's crimes took off after his Texas fitness club went bankrupt. He then turned to offshore banking and started operating a scheme. According to CNBC, many of his victims were retirees who were guaranteed safe investments, making this case of investor fraud all the more atrocious. When the Securities and Exchange Commission raided Stanford Financial Group's Houston headquarters on February 2009, they charged the tycoon and his associates with running a massive ongoing fraud, CNBC reported. Allegedly, Stanford had been conning investors in order to fund his lavish lifestyle. This scam culminated in $7 billion in losses for investors. CNBC reported that Stanford was convicted on 13 counts in 2012 and is currently serving a 110-year sentence at a high-security prison in Florida. 
The consequences of his crime still on, as his victims continue to suffer from the loss of millions of dollars during the time the scheme was in operation. 10. Adolf Merkel Adolf Merkel was one of Germany's richest people, with a personal wealth of around $12.8 billion. Just like some of the people on this list, Merkel was also greatly hit by the market crisis of 2008, in which he lost close to $3.6 billion. In the face of this huge loss, he still remained one of the richest men in Germany. Towards the end of 2008, VEM, his investment firm, faced a serious liquidity crisis and reported $6 billion in losses. To make up for it, Merkel took a chance and made a series of bold investments, which ultimately cost him more money. Sadly, after almost losing everything, Merkel tragically ended his life by throwing himself in front of a moving train. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Comment down below your thoughts and suggestions and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed the content. Also, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. With that said, have a great day you guys and I'll see you in the next one.